Signed, Jack the Ripper. A taunting letter was sent to the Central News Office on New Bridge Street in the City of London in the last week of September 1888. Never caught, the killer's identity of five or possibly more women in the East End of London remains a mystery. And today, we will take a deep dive into some revelations of Jack the Ripper. From 3rd April 1888 to 13th February 1891, 11 separate murders, tagged the Whitechapel murders, was linked to the same culprit, Jack the Ripper, but five of the 11 Whitechapel murders, known as the Canonical Five, are actually believed to be the work of Jack the Ripper, as the five victims were female prostitutes who lived and worked in the slums of the East End of London. All had the same distinctive body mutilations, such as deep throat wounds, removal of internal organs, abdominal, genital, and facial mutilations, which was believed to be the Ripper's method of killing. Mary Nichols, Annie Chapman, Elizabeth Stride, Catherine Eddowes, and Mary Kelly, commonly known as the canonical five victims, are the murders directly linked to the Ripper. However, there were two victims who were murdered before the canonical five, Emma Smith, who was attacked in the early hours of the 3rd April 1888 and Martha Tapram, who was murdered on 7th August 1888, which was somewhat thought to be Jack the Ripper's job, but was later related to gang violence in the East End. Mutilated unidentified bodies found, Jack begins what may be his first crime. Stay with us and let's find out. Emma Smith was robbed and sexually assaulted in Osborne Street, Whitechapel. She had been smashed in her face, received a cut to her ear, and a blunt object was also inserted into her vagina. She died the following day at London Hospital after stating that a group of men had attacked her. Martha Tabram was also murdered in George Yard, Whitechapel. She, on the other hand, was stabbed 39 times in her throat, lungs, heart, liver, spleen, stomach, and abdomen with additional knife wounds inflicted to her breasts and vagina. Imagine getting stabbed 39 times. This reduces your survival chances. Martha couldn't leave to tell who attacked her. The first canonical five victim, Mary Ann Nicholas, was discovered dead at about 3.40 a.m. on Friday 31 August 1888 in Bucks Row, Whitechapel. The killer with this victim demonstrated the modus operandi of his killing Ray in the East End. Her body was found with her throat slit by two deep cuts, one of which had been cut back to the spine, savagely inflicted. Some newspaper reports that it looked like her head was almost severed from her body. Her vagina and lower abdomen had been stabbed, and other incisions on both sides of her abdomen had also been caused by the same knife, each wound believed to be inflicted in a downward thrusting manner. 8 September 1888 the body of another prostitute was found in the backyard on 29 Hanbury Street, less than a mile away from Bucks Row, where Mary Nichols was murdered a week earlier and she was identified as Annie Chapman. This time around, the Ripper removed her womb, sections of her bladder, and vagina. And just like Mary Ann Nichols, her throat was also slit by two deep cuts. The divisional police surgeon at that time, Dr. George Baxter Phillips, explained Annie Chapman's murderer killed her in a manner that allowed him to obtain her womb. And it was concluded that the skill and speed displayed in removing the organs meant the murderer had some anatomical knowledge. Maybe he was a doctor or a butcher. Given the headline, the night off the double murder, Elizabeth Stride and Catherine Meadows were both murdered in the early morning hours of Sunday, 30 September 1888. Elizabeth Stride's body was discovered in Dutfield's yard off Burner Street, now Henrique Street in Whitechapel. The only thing believed to be the cause of death was a single cut across her neck, without any other mutilations to her body. This led to uncertainty as to whether Jack the Ripper committed that murder or maybe he was probably interrupted and couldn't finish the attack. Catherine Eddowes's body was found about an hour later in the corner of Mitre Square in the city of London after Elizabeth Stride's body was found and similar to Mary Nicholas and Annie Chapman. Her throat was also severed from ear to ear. Her abdomen ripped with her intestines placed over her shoulder, and a section of the intestine detached and placed between her body and left arm. Her left kidney and the major parts of her uterus had been removed and her face had been disfigured. The mutilated body of Mary Jane Kelly, who was believed to be the last victim of the Ripper, 
was discovered lying in her bed in the single room where she lived at 13 Millers Court, Spitalfields on Friday 9, November 1888. Her throat was slit down to her spine, her abdomen cut, and almost all of her organs ripped out. Her heart was cut out and wasn't found at the crime scene, and without surprise, her face had been mutilated beyond recognition. There were other Whitechapel murders later. However, they could not be tied to Jack the Ripper as those victims didn't bear the usual Jack the Ripper's modus operandi. A group of citizens volunteered and formed the Vigilance Committee in the East End, with the aim of helping the police and raising funds to be offered as a reward for information that might lead to the killer's arrest. Numerous letters about the case were received by the police, newspapers, and authorities from anonymous members of the public and even other media outlets, either offering information on how to apprehend the killer or just claiming to be the murderer himself. Maybe some members of the public probably agreed with the Ripper's ideology and wanted to mess around with the investigation by sending in those letters. One letter that caused a stir was the From Hell letter, signed Jack the Ripper. It came along with a small box containing half of a human kidney, preserved in ethanol, but they couldn't tell if it belonged to Eddowes, whose kidney was ripped out when she was found. The story of Jack the Ripper and his deeds, murder of maybe five or more women came to an abrupt end and the case was closed. The murders were never solved, and the legends centered on these murders became historical research in motion pictures, capturing public imagination to this day. Well, that's all for this video. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.